Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer is certainly one of the most interesting personalities in the tech industry today. Nicholas Carlson just wrote a brand new book all about her and her fight to save Yahoo. Here he is, author and also the chief correspondent at Business Insider. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Just to get started, why did you choose Marissa Meyer as your topic? What right. was so compelling about her? Well, I mean, Meyer is someone who is, the, the more research I did, the more fascinated I was by some of her contradictions. You know, she's this person who's famous for being in fashion magazines like Vogue, but on the other hand, there's a scene in the book where she shows up at Yahoo, she's signing this $200 million contract, uh, and she shows up in a 10-year-old uh, beat-up BMW, and uh, she's just, you know, very practical, and she signs the thing, and, and then these people from New York who had just hired her, they're fancy board members and people like that, and they're like, Okay, so do you need a limousine? Do you need people to take you to Google to help you clean things, things out? And she's like, no, nah, my mom's going to be there. She'll help me out. So she's, she's just, she's not always who she appears to be, and I, I think that's fascinating. And there are so many interesting stories in here just like that that you kind of dug from all of this original reporting. How did you report this book? How did you get these sources to, to disclose things to you? Right, so it really has been just years of efforts. I've been covering the tech space and the internet and Yahoo and Marissa Meyer and Google since 2006. And the way I meet sources is I just start with them. Um, I just go out and um, introduce myself and I I ask them, you know, hey, I'd like to get an education from you about what you know. Tell me. I don't, I, I don't know everything, so please tell me. And then, and then, you know, out of 100 people that I meet like that, um, 99 will just kind of blow me off. One will be, you know, a person who wants to meet with me. And from that group of people, I start to develop sources, who, people who trust me. Right. And who is this book for? This book is for Anyone who loves like a like a great story. Like I was not going to write a book until I had a subject material that was a story. And the rise of Yahoo, its downfall, then its actual rejuvenation, and then finally downfall again, and then the hiring of Marissa Meyer. It's just such a. It's like it's like to me. It's like this this saga that goes up and down. Uh, so anyone who's really interested in a story like that, um, I think that people who see Marissa Meyer, this 39 year old woman who's worth 700 million dollars at least, uh, and want to know how did she do that. Uh, you know, she's an inspiration. She's really a role model, and I get into sort of how she did, uh, how she became the Marissa Meyer we've all heard of. And then finally, people who love books like *Barbarians at the Gate* and *Disney War*. Those are the books that I love, and so I tried to write one like that. Now, one thing that you say, spoiler alert, at the end of the book, in like the <laughs> epilogue, yeah. is that maybe Yahoo isn't a company that could be saved at all. Oh, it's possible by anybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, can can Yahoo be saved? Was Marissa the right person to bring in to do this? Right. Well, those are two those are two interesting questions, and and it's true. I mean, Yahoo is one of these companies which it has a billion users, but what do they use it for? Uh, you know, anything that people use Yahoo for, they could probably find somewhere else at this point. Does it solve a problem that no one else solves? And and no, I don't think I think the answer is no. And so that makes they're in just a very difficult situation. There was one thing um, you mentioned in the book is that when she came on board, it was pretty universally agreed that Yahoo needed to fire at least 30 to 50 percent right. of the staff and she did not do that. Is that her fatal mistake here? Do you think she should have done those cuts? Do you think she regrets that? I don't know if she regrets it, but I think that a lot of shareholders wish she had done it. Certainly it was one of these things where when she was hired, she talked to the board that hired her and said, I agree that, that cost cutting needs to happen. Um, and it just didn't happen the way that Dan Loeb and uh, the, the, the director who really was influential in hiring her, it didn't happen in the way that he expected. And in the end, uh, Meyer, instead of cutting costs that way, she cut costs and tried to improve the quality of Yahoo Talent by instituting something called QPRs. Mm -hmm. And this was a, it's sort of like stack ranking. So even on a high performing team, what happened was is somebody on the team had to be ranked lower. Right. And this caused a, caused a lot of friction. And like there's this really dramatic moment in the book, if I do say so myself, where in front of, you know, so employees were so fed up with this system that um, they were demanding that Meyer answer some questions in a large, you know, all, all hands meeting. And she gets up on stage and sort of, instead of really answering the questions directly, she starts reading from a children's book. And, and it left a lot of people very befuddled. <laughs> That's one of my favorite moments of the book. That's It's just so ridiculous that yeah. she thought she did this. But at the same time, all those people in the room that were so angry were lucky to still have jobs anyway because she <laughs> know, could have right? just fired them the first well, day. Well, that's the great irony. It's like they were mad at her because basically she decided not to fire them. 
That's absolutely the case. Right. Yeah. What do you see for Marissa Meyer's next chapter? Yeah. You know, after this is done, what what does she? What, where does she go from here? Well, I think Marissa Meyer is a total rock star. I mean, I think she's uh, hardworking, creative. Uh, no one in the entire world prepares better than her. It's like a superpower of hers. So. So she came into the company as a, as a software engineer. She was hired to be this product developer. Um, but she's done cl some good financial engineering. So even if tomorrow Yahoo split into two companies and uh, it went private and you know they decided that they didn't want to hire, they keep her on, they replaced her, okay, she could say to shareholders, like, look, you hired me as a software engineer, I was a financial engineer and I doubled the stock and, uh, and she's 39 and she's on to great things. I mean, she could run another company you know, next week. What can a scrappy startup entrepreneur take from this book? Why yeah. should someone who reads TechCrunch buy this book? Well, there's a couple great lessons for people who can, that you can get out of reading this book. Because I tell the story of how Meyer, at age 22, 23, comes out of Stanford, and she has these options. She was a great student, and she had options. She could have gone and been a consultant or gone into academia. And instead, she works for this company with a weird name called Google. Um, and she goes in, and she went in as a coder. And it was interesting to me, I learned in doing the reporting for the book, that she went in as a coder, and she worked on this product, uh, this project, to, to, she actually worked on the first ad system for Google. And it kind of took her a few months. And then this guy named Jeff Dean came in. And he is a superstar coder, that I'm sure many of your viewers are aware of him. And he, re he, did the, he solved the problem in about three weeks. Hmm. And what Meyer did was really smart. She said, okay, I'm not going to be a superstar coder at Google. I can help this company in other ways. So she just started throwing herself at any problem she could. Um, and she really achieved a lot. And she eventually became basically Larry Page's you know, right hand. And uh, really every product that went live on the site um, had to go through her. So the, the lesson is throw yourself at whatever you can. And it seems like don't be dissuaded by all the people who may For sure. resent you well, as you throw yourself at every single thing that you can. Because within Google, as you write in here, she certainly had her fair share of haters. Absolutely. So you know, when you're throwing yourself at every problem, there are probably going to be some people who are already trying to solve those problems. And Meyer, to her credit, just, <laughs> just kept solving problems and didn't really worry about it too much. Uh, and for sure, it worked out for her, no doubt. And I, and I, think, it's, I think it's certainly something that a lot of people could learn from. All right, Nicholas Carlson, uh, thank you for stopping by. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me.